Hi, welcome to another session of circuits and networks. In today's class, that is under transient analysis, we are going to see the initial conditions of RLC put together in series as well as in parallel arrangement. What I am trying to say, if the circuit is in this fashion and if the circuit is in this fashion, how to solve for initial conditions when RLC parameters are connected in series as well as in parallel. So this particular class we are going to treat as a basic class and class 4 will be remembering as the basics which are involved with RLC connected in series or in parallel arrangement. So let us begin with the basic problem. Here you can see in figure 1 you have 1000 volts connected to 100 ohms, 20 Henry and 40 microfarads and there is a switch which is open and it is going to get closed at t equal to 0. So with z 0 initial conditions we need to find what is current, what is di by dt, what is d square i by dt square at t equal to 0 plus. A familiar problem we have seen in our earlier transient classes. So we can go through to transient 1, transient 2 classes for basic clarification. Here directly we are going to solve the problem. So when the switch was open, when the switch was open naturally, there was no current in the passive elements. So current when it is not going to get supplied to passive elements naturally, all the conditions will be treated as initial conditions and here the current across inductor will be zero. Similarly, voltage across capacitor will also be zero. So these two we are treating as equation one and equation two. Then what? Then we know from the initial conditions that when the switch is going to get closed at t equal to zero, inductor acts as open circuit and capacitor acts as short circuit. This we have seen from our basic transient classes. So you can go through the videos under a transient analysis especially video 1 and video 2 which are going to give you the basic knowledge of behavior of inductor and capacitor during initial conditions. So this is how the circuit looks like. So figure 1 is changed to figure 1.a where the switch is closed, inductor acts as open circuit and capacitor acts as short circuit. So with this we know that the voltage and current they do not change instantaneously. So V of 0 plus is also 0 and I of 0 plus is also 0 from the basic analysis. So these four points we need to keep our in mind that initial conditions will not get affected when the switch is going to get closed or open. Okay. Now for a time t greater than 0 that is what after 0 plus condition if the cir circuit switch is closed. So this is how the circuit looks like. So you can see now the input voltage is connected to all the passive elements. Now we need to find out I of t. So we are going to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law for this particular circuit. So we are going to get minus because we are starting from lower potential. So minus 1000 volts plus the voltage developed across a resistor that is R into I. R is 100. I value that which we need to find out. Then we have the voltage across inductor as L di by dt. So L di by dt, L value is 20, that is why di by dt plus you have 1 by C integral i dt. So 1 by C, C it is replaced by 40 microfarads integral i dt, it is equal to 0. Now this is the equation which we have framed as phi and that is our basic equation. From this we need to find out what is di by dt and d square i by dt square. So at t equal to 0 plus from this equation 5, I am substituting the values. So minus 1000 as it is plus 100 of i of 0 plus plus 20 di by dt of 0 plus plus 1 by 40 microfarads integral i of 0 plus dt equal to 0. Just we have substituted t equal to 0 plus in the equation 5. And what we know? We know that the i of 0 plus is 0. So wherever you have i of 0 plus especially in these two conditions it is 0. What we need to find out? di by dt of 0 plus. So you can see we have replaced the values of i of 0 plus value. 
that is 0 over here, 0 over here. So we are left over with 20 di by dt of 0 plus is equal to 1000. Now with this I am going to get the value of di by dt at 0 plus is equal to 50 amperes per second. So this we are treating as equation 6. I hope you understood how I have obtained 50 amperes per second for this particular equation 5 when we are substituting t equal to 0 plus. Now once we are done with this, let us go with d square i by dt square at 0 plus. So before that, we need to concentrate again on equation 5. So we are differentiating equation 5 in order to obtain double time of, uh, double time of derivation. So you can see constant derivation is 0. You have 100 di by dt, this equation, plus 20 d square i by dt square, plus you have integration over here and you have 40 microfarads. So this micro when it goes to the numerator it becomes 10 to the power of 6. The 40 remains as it is and differentiation of integration it leads to the value as i which is equal to 0. So this equation is framed from equation 5. By differentiating equation 5 we got this equation. Now what is our main intention? We have to obtain d square i by dt square. So I am taking this 20 di by dt square is equal to I am taking this 100 di by dt and 10 to the power of 6 by 40 i on the left hand side. So this is how it becomes and this we are treating as equation 7. At t equal to 0 plus this equation 7 what we have derived it changes to this particular equation. Just we have replaced instead of i we have replaced i of 0 plus that is it. So treating this equation as 8 and from equation 4 we know that i of 0 plus is equal to 0 and just from equation 6 we have derived i of 0 plus differentiation of i of 0 plus by dt is equal to 50 amperes per second. Substituting equation 4 and equation 6 in equation 8 we are going to get d square i by dt square of 0 plus is equal to minus 100 by 20. Why is minus 100 by 20? Because we have here minus 100 and this 20 has gone to the denominator and you have i of 0 plus by dt, di of 0 plus by dt which is nothing but 50 from equation 6 and this equation we have i of 0 plus is equal to 0, so substituting the value. So this leads to minus 250 amperes per second square. I hope you understood this problem. Let us see the parallel circuit. Now you can see the parallel circuit. You have 28 amperes supplying passive elements and the switch initially it was closed. At t equal to 0 it is open. Now with this initial conditions we need to find what is voltage, differentiation of voltage and d square by dt square of voltage at t equal to 0 plus. So again it is a treated as special problem. So we know to know the basics that when the switch was closed, when the switch was closed naturally, current is passing through the switch. That is understood because it becomes a short wire. Naturally, there is no current or voltage which is being developed in this passive elements. So I of 0 minus is 0 and V of 0 minus is also 0 in the initial conditions when the switch was closed. Okay, And this behavior it won't get changed because the current to inductor and voltage across capacitor cannot change instantaneously. This can be proved when you open the switch at t equal to 0. So when you are going to open the switch you can see inductor behaves as open circuit, capacitor behaves as short circuit. So naturally the current through inductor is 0 and voltage across capacitor is also 0. So this is how we need to remember the basics of inductors and capacitor at initial conditions. So after satisfying these relations, let us solve the actual problem where we need to find out V dV by dt and d square p by dt square. So for time t greater than 0, this circuit is obtained in this fashion and we need to obtain voltage across the parallel circuit because the current is given ultimately we need to find out voltage. So since it is a parallel circuit, if at all I select voltage on the numerator because 
on the common node point i am selecting higher potential voltage as v and the lower potential as zero so naturally all the parameters are connected in parallel so naturally the same voltage will be applied to current source and the passive elements so the circuit has changed to to be in this fashion i hope you understood how we have obtained voltage in parallel circuit now once this voltage is framed either at this particular node or at this particular node applying kirchhoff's current law at this particular node v so we are going to get minus 28 amperes because it's a incoming current towards the potential v and v it is a at higher potential so it becomes v by 15 it becomes another branch current you have a current which is flowing in 8 henrys so that will be 1 by l integral v dt so it becomes 1 by 8 integral v dt plus the current through capacitor it will be c dv by dt so it becomes 0.4 dv by dt equal to 0 so i hope you understood how we got this equation 1 now at t equal to 0 plus just substituting the value wherever you have t there we are substituting 0 plus so this is how the equation 1 changes to and with the initial conditions we know that a v of 0 plus is equal to 0 so substituting the value of v of 0 plus here and here in both the conditions so we are going to left over with 0.4 dv by dt of 0 plus is equal to 28 in fact db by dt at 0 plus is equal to 28 by 0.4 which will give you the value as 70 volts per second is this clear right now from this equation 1 we can differentiate and we are going to obtain the square term of voltage so you can see this constant becomes zero you have v here that by that is why it is dv by dt 1 by 15 plus integration is there and you are going to apply differentiation so integration with differentiation goes off and you are going to refer with v by 8 plus 0.4 this particular value dv by dt becomes d square v by dt square so i'm rearranging the equation and i'm going to frame equation 3 and then i'm going to apply at t equal to 0 plus the conditions so 0.4 d square v of 0 plus by dt square which is equal to minus 1 by 15 dv by dt at 0 plus minus v of 0 plus by 8 so this will be giving you the value as minus 1 by you can see this 0.4 it goes to the denominator of this and anyhow this 0.4 is going to get multiplied with 8 also but since it is v of 0 plus so i'm neglecting this particular parameter so naturally i'm going to obtain the value as minus 70 divided by 15 times 0.4, which will be giving you the value as 35 by 3, which is which is equal to minus 11.66 volts per second square. So this is how we need to solve the basic problems related to RLC, whether they are arranged in series or in parallel. Whatever the conditions of current and voltage is required, this can be easily sorted out for transient conditions with initial values. in our later classes we are going to see the derivation of transient current and the numericals on transient currents as well as voltages uh, with n number of examples next uh, we are also going to see the combinations of inductor capacitor arranged in series or parallel with resistor or resistor inductor arranged in parallel or series with capacitor so that will be our immediate class and at the later class we are going to see the transient and transient transient current and transient voltage related problems so i hope you understand this particular transient analysis class with uh, initial conditions of rlc whether are in series or in parallel so please share among your friends and subscribe to my channel and please press the bell icon for future notifications Thank you.